Today we're talking about fraud, cons, and Ponzi schemes, and we're specifically diving into the question of whether or not Sam Bankman-Fried, CEO of the cryptocurrency exchange FTX, has used Madoff tactics in his business dealings. You may be wondering, what does Bernie Madoff have to do with a 30-year-old crypto CEO? Well, let's take a closer look to find out. Stay tuned. First off, who are Bernie Madoff and Bankman-Fried, and why? Why are we comparing them? First, for those of you who might not be familiar with Bernie Madoff, he was a Wall Street financier who was convicted of running a massive Ponzi scheme that defrauded investors out of billions of dollars. His scam was uncovered in 2008, and he's currently serving a 150-year prison sentence. On the other hand, Sam Bankman-Fried is a young, untested math prodigy who gained instant credibility in the crypto industry as the CEO of FT. Well, at first glance, Sam Bankman Freed, or SBF as he's known, couldn't be more different from Bernie Madoff. Madoff was a Wall Street veteran, while SBF is a young millennial crypto entrepreneur. But despite their immediate differences, experts are drawing some disturbing comparisons between the two men. Diana Enriquez, financial historian and the author of The Wizard of Lies, the book about Madoff's infamous Ponzi scheme, says the similarities between the two men are startling. She points to the deliberate, conspicuous complexity of their businesses, which made it hard for investors to fully understand what was going on. In both cases, investors were left trusting the central character, Madoff or SBF, fully without understanding the details of their investments. But the similarities don't stop there. Both men were financial innovators, running complex and dizzying businesses, and both have faced financial crashes that exposed holes in their operations. Operations. In Madoff's case, it was the 2008 global financial crisis. For SBF, it was the downturn in the cryptocurrency market, the COVID-19 pandemic, and skyrocketing inflation. Moving on, what exactly is SBF accused of? U.S. federal prosecutors in New York have released a complaint against him, alleging eight counts of fraud. If found guilty, he faces a maximum of 115 years in prison, just slightly shorter than Madoff's 150 years sentence. And let's not forget that SBF has not yet been formally charged and has yet to enter a guilty plea. He could still be found not guilty on all counts. But the similarities between the two cases are hard to ignore. Both men have been accused of running Ponzi schemes, essentially robbing Peter to pay Paul. And both men worked hard to present themselves as models of trust, even as red flags and disturbing details piled up. As Enriquez put it, the most important gift of a fraudster is that he can inspire confidence that will never waver. Let's take a closer look at FTX exchange collapse. According to reports, FTX had allegedly misused billions of dollars worth of consumer investments. The exchange reportedly used these funds to finance risky bets by Alameda Research, which ultimately led to its downfall. This breach of FTX's terms of service has left many customers feeling betrayed and frustrated. As the fallout from the accusations continued, FTX announced on November 11th that it had filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. In the wake of this announcement, Bankman Freed stepped down from his position as CEO. The collapse of FTX and its native token, FTT, has sent shockwaves through the crypto community. Now it looks like things are about to get even worse for the exchange and its founder, Sam Bankman Freed. After the dust settled following a series of events, it became clear that Bankman Freed and two other executives were being monitored in the Bahamas. As authorities in the Bahamas launched an investigation into the exchange company, FTX, the company's Bahamian subsidiary, FTX Digital Markets, took the unusual step of applying for Chapter 15 bankruptcy protection from an American court. This decision was likely made in an effort to protect the company's assets and potentially mitigate any potential financial losses. The ongoing investigation and bankruptcy proceedings will likely have significant ramifications for FTX and its shareholders in the coming months. Following up, FTX founder is trying to raise liquidity. On November 16th, Bankman Freed announced on Twitter that he was attempting to raise liquidity in order to reimburse individuals
individuals who had funds invested in the company. This announcement was made despite the fact that there are ongoing investigations and the potential for legal consequences. Bankman-Fried stated that his primary concern was ensuring that those who had money tied up in FTX were able to retrieve it as soon as possible. Prior to the collapse of FTX, the U.S. Justice Department and the Securities and Exchange Commission were already conducting an investigation into the exchange's U.S. branch. This investigation was focused on the potential violation of security laws by certain assets listed on the exchange. The SEC and Justice Department had become suspicious of potential wrongdoing and were looking into the matter in order to determine the extent of any potential violations. What's more, SEC chair met with FTX founder. Recently, people found out that Gary Gensler, the chair of the Securities and Exchange Commission, or SEC, had a meeting with Bankman Freed earlier in the year. The details of the meeting have not been disclosed, but the timing of the meeting has led many to speculate about the SEC's involvement in the ongoing investigation into FTX. As the investigation continues, questions and concerns about the SEC's involvement have been added to the general sense of uncertainty and confusion surrounding the situation. Some have questioned whether the SEC is working in conjunction with FTX or if there may be other motives behind the meeting. The lack of transparency has only served to fuel further speculation and uncertainty. The recent accusations and bankruptcy filing have had a major impact on Bankman Freed's financial situation. Reports indicate that the former billionaire's net worth has decreased dramatically, dropping from a staggering $7.5 billion to a mere $300 million. This significant decrease in net worth is likely to have significant consequences for Bankman Freed and his financial endeavors. Moving on to FTX customers demand reimbursements. As the investigation into FTX's activities continue, the true scope of the harm caused to customers is slowly being revealed. Many of those affected are now calling for reimbursement for the funds they have lost as a result of the company's actions. It's yet to be determined how these demands will be dealt with and whether the executives of FTX, including CEO Bankman Freed, will face any legal repercussions for their alleged wrongdoing. The outcome of the investigation will likely have significant consequences for those involved and could potentially shape the future of the industry as a whole. Coming up, we look at massive bail bond and plea deals in SBF and FTX. Caroline Ellison, the CEO of Alameda Research, has struck a plea deal with the court that will allow her to avoid jail time. Ellison has agreed to cooperate with the Southern District of New York's investigation into FTX, and Alameda will be fined and forfeit any assets gained from the stolen money from FTX. On top of all that, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission has declared that the FTX exchange token, or FTX, T is considered a security. This determination was made using the Howey test, which states that a transaction is an investment contract if there's an investment of money in a common enterprise with the expectation of profits from the efforts of others. As of right now, the FTT token is trading at under $0.8, a far cry from its all-time high of $85 on September 9, 2022. Moving on to celebrities getting sued over endorsement of FTX. FTX as a platform quickly gained popularity and attracted a number of high-profile investors and celebrities, including Tom Brady, Madonna, Gwyneth Paltrow, and David Ortiz. However, things took a turn for the worse when the company was hit with a class-action lawsuit earlier this month. The suit, which was filed against celebrities like Jimmy Fallon, Justin Bieber, and Serena Williams, claimed that the stars promoted Bored Ape Yacht Club NFTs without disclosing their own involvement with digital financial institutions. NFTs, or non-fungible tokens, are a crypto-related phenomenon that allows digital works of art and other collectibles to be transformed into verifiable assets that can be easily traded on the blockchain. The Board Ape Yacht Club is a collection of 10,000 pieces of digital NFT art that lives on the Ethereum blockchain. But as the crypto world crumbles in the wake of FTX's fall from grace, many investors are finding that their investments in NFTs aren't worth what they paid for them. In fact, the CEO of FTX testified on Capitol Hill earlier this week that investors in the platform are not expected to be able to recover their money. As a result, celebrities like Tom Brady, Giselle 
Michelle Bunchen and David Ortiz are now facing legal scrutiny for their involvement with FTX and their endorsement of the platform. The lawsuits allege that these public figures did not properly disclose their own involvement with digital financial institutions and are seeking damages from the celebrities for their role in promoting the platform, not to mention the legal risks of promoting crypto investments. This isn't the first time that celebrities have found themselves in legal trouble for promoting risky crypto investments. In fact, regulators have been warning investors about celebrity endorsements of cryptocurrencies for years. Charles Whitehead, a professor at Cornell Law School, told a reporter, selling an asset that is a financial instrument is not the same thing as selling sneakers. All these celebrities who are running around and doing these sorts of sponsorships should stop and ask a securities lawyer. In other words, if you're a celebrity who is thinking about promoting a crypto investment, make sure you do your due diligence and seek legal counsel before making any endorsements. Otherwise, you could end up facing legal trouble like Tom Brady, Madonna, Gwyneth Paltrow, and David Ortiz. Lastly, let's look at what else is happening in the crypto world. It's not all doom and gloom in the crypto world. A developer known as Gozi has proposed receiving $250,000 in salary to continue development on the mixing protocol Tornado Cash. Tornado Cash was sanctioned by the U.S. Office of Foreign Assets Control in August for allegedly facilitating the laundering of over $7 billion worth of cryptocurrency. Gozi's responsibilities would include maintaining the Tornado Cash website, moderating community activities, further developing the protocol, and providing educational resources for users. Governance voting on Gozi's proposal is set to begin on December 24th. That's a wrap for this video. What are your thoughts on the future of SBF and FTX? Let us know in the comments below. Also, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like these. See you in the next one.